Who are you? You are unique. Different. You are a masterpiece. Bit of a pregnant pause there. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, you're looking well, most of you. <laughs> it's good to be able to worship together and just feel God's presence. Really trusting that God's going to do a wonderful thing, well, continue to do a wonderful thing with us this morning. From what I hear, many people are really enjoying the series. And not just enjoying it, but actually benefiting from it and understanding what it means to be created in the image of God and to be finding our identity as born-again people in God. And today is the fifth, the fifth, the fifth in the series, and it's, I am a citizen of heaven. I have a king. And so we've looked at, when I put my faith in Christ, I become a son or a daughter and God is my Father. And then I have a profound identity where I become a servant of the Most High God, and He is my Master. We've seen that we are saints once we are forgiven, and that Christ is our Savior. And today I want to share with you our identity is that we have a wonderful new King, and we are citizens of heaven. Look at this wonderful scripture in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body by the power that enables Him even to subject all things to Himself. Friends, this morning, I want to go back to the beginning and I want to trust that God's going to help you and help me get an understanding of how things were at the beginning. In the Garden of Eden, heaven and earth are perfectly intersected. In Eden, heaven is on earth. You with me? I want, I want to ask that God would help you you and I this morning get this indelibly imprinted upon our minds and upon the spirit of our mind that this is the place of heaven. This is where Adam and Eve had perfect access to the presence of God 24-7. You know, you and I have sporadic experiences of the presence of God. Unless there are some of you who walk in the presence all the time. In the Shekinah glory of God. No, we have to access God's presence by faith. Life comes in and bombards us and shakes us and we get distracted and we get tired and we get messed around. And we've got to fight to get back into the presence of God. For Adam and Eve, there was never a bad day. You know those days when your soul is feeling stale and tired and you don't feel like praying and you don't feel like worshiping. They never had that. They just walked in God's presence every single day. No effort to get into worship. They were in a place of worship all the time. There's no depression. There's no anxiety. There are no sidetracks. It's uninterrupted, perfect fellowship. I want to, I want to trust that the Holy Spirit will... Imprint that in your minds this morning. You know, in, in Genesis 3, it says, and they heard the Lord walking in the garden. Okay, it was a bad one because they were in a bit of trouble, but it was normal for them to have God in the garden. This is heaven on earth. That is pretty close fellowship. To hear God walking in the garden. 
Imagine your husband saying one night, Liffy, is that God I hear in the kitchen? <laughs> this place of perfect, perfect fellowship. Imagine Adam coming home at night from work. Hi, honey, I'm home. How was your day, honey? Perfect. How was your darling? Perfect. How are the sheep and the oxen? Perfect. How are the kids? Perfect. <laughs> Heaven on earth. And then, friends, there's this terrible, awful disruption. There's the serpent that is in the garden. And he starts speaking about, hey, you'll be like God. You'll be full of wisdom. And bang. There's this tearing. There's this tearing of heaven and earth. What an awful, awful moment. And you know how Adam and Eve get banished from this place of perfection, this place of wonder, this place of the perfect presence of God. Friends, understand it deep in your spirit that that was a violation of a holy God who had brought us into fellowship with Himself to walk in perfect harmony, in perfect joy, in perfect, in perfect happiness. And there's this awful interruption. There's this severing between heaven and earth. And that is what I call life interrupted. Life as God intended it was rudely interrupted. Heaven and earth are torn apart. Instead of having fellowship with God, there's this massive chasm. It's like man's here and God's way over there. And there's this terrible chasm in between. And now we need an intermediator to take us to heaven. And that's the wonder of what it means to be born again, friends. When you and I are born again, that chasm vanishes and we're in the kingdom of God. That's the miracle of our salvation. You see, God is absolutely intent on restoring that fellowship. And we know that in the garden, He already starts with the atonement, doesn't He? And from then on, we have these amazing moments where heaven breaks in, heaven breaks in, heaven breaks in. In the desert, with God's people being released from bondage. In the temple, the Shekinah glory of God. God would come and presence Himself. Let's feel His presence once again. Heaven intersecting earth. Heaven breaking in. And you have this with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph. And you, and you go through the Old Testament, and heaven breaks in. Heaven breaks in. Heaven breaks in. A wonderful, a wonderful picture of this, this father who's relentless in wanting fellowship with us. He wants us to know his presence. He wants us to know what it is to live in his presence. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what he wants, friends. Anything less, you've been robbed. Anything less, friends. You and I are being robbed. And then comes that amazing moment in history. First, it starts very gradual with this little baby in a manger that no one really knows or cares about. This man who is despised and rejected among men. But friends, he has an interruption of gigantic proportion. Jesus comes and he interrupts history. That from that day on, mankind marks that day, whether you're a heathen or a believer. Christ bursts onto the scene and he says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so we have Jesus, who's, who's the embodiment of heaven, he is heaven in the flesh. 
and through his life and ministry, heaven is breaking in all over the place. People are getting delivered. People are getting saved. People are getting healed, transformed. Heaven is breaking in. There's a new intersection, intersection happening between heaven and earth. And Jesus says to his disciples, when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, right? your kingdom come in me, in my family, in my friends, in my neighborhood, in my city, in my country. Your kingdom come, your rule, your reign, your power, your love, your authority. Let it reign. Let heaven intersect earth. And that's what happens when you're born again, friends. Listen to this wonderful scripture in Colossians. He has delivered us, delivered us out of the domain of darkness. And listen, transferred us into the kingdom of God. Friends, what an incredible transaction. Not becoming religious, No, I was in darkness, now I'm in light. I was in the kingdom of the devil, and now I'm in the kingdom of the Son of the Most High God. And I become, by God's ordination, a son of God and a citizen of heaven. I'm in that place of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You know, my daughter lives in the UK, and she's got now dual citizenship. She's a citizen of the UK, and she's a citizen of South Africa. And you know, that's so lacquer, because when you come to South Africa, you fly on your South African passport, and all these other poor, poor people have to go through these long queues, and they go through the express South African citizen. Thank you. When she goes back to England, she takes out her British passport. And now it's the lacquer because they're so jacked up there, you don't even, you just walk through a turnstile, ching, you just flick your passport, ching, ching, and you're in. <laughs> Citizen. With the right passport. Friends, you and I, in Jesus, have been given the passport to heaven. Yes. We are citizens of the King. Yeah. We have free access into the presence of God 24 7. We have free access into all his blessings, all his provision, all his power, all his love, all his grace. Easy access. I'm a citizen on earth, but friends, if you're born again, the kingdom of heaven has broken into your life and you are a citizen of the king. And we're not living in the fullness of it, but friends, we're getting tastes of it, aren't we? Tastes of heaven. Even this morning, a tiny taste of heaven or something we'll be doing for eternity. Just reveling in the presence of God 24-7. In case I forget, let me tell you this. It will eclipse Eden. You know why I say that? Life was interrupted in Eden. Eden. God had a plan. Boom, interruption. Let me ask you a question. Has God changed the plan? No. I'm running ahead of myself. But when Jesus comes and he fixes this whole thing up, plan A will continue. Friends, not playing a harp on a cloud, please. Living and reigning with Jesus on a renewed earth with power and glory. How do we live? How do we live with dual citizenship? Because you're a citizen of South Africa, Botswana, Mozambique, whatever. But you're a citizen of the world. But if you're born again, You're a citizen of heaven. Listen to Ephesians. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens. You see the Bible is talking about aliens long before these other scientists and that. So you are no longer strangers and aliens. But you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. 
So here's my question. How are you living as a citizen of heaven on earth? Can people detect that you're from another country? Or do you think that just by speaking Christianese, they'll think you're a citizen of heaven? Or just because you read your Bible, that you're a citizen of heaven? Or because you go to meetings at the church, you're a citizen of heaven? When my daughter was three, we went on a ministry trip to America. These valleys in America, driving long slop cars on the big freeways, 1979. So we go into a shop, my daughter's three. And my daughter, my little girl, speaking. And one of, the, one of the ladies at the counter says, Oh, how cute. She's got an accent. I think, oh, Duffy, of course she's got an accent. She's a South African. Her parents are South African. She lives with South Africans. Of course she's got an accent. She's from South Africa. If you're in the presence of unbelievers for more than 10 minutes, can they catch your accent? Seriously, friends, we're not talking about Bible punching, throwing verses out, talking about church. No. Can, do they know you are from another planet? I, I had such a chuckle. I was listening to a guy talking about how wonderful it is to pray in our heavenly language, to pray in tongues. So one day at work, lunchtime, he's in some place there at work. He, he ducks off, yes, and he's praying in tongues. He's praying in tongues aloud, and he's going for it. He doesn't realize that one of his mates hears him. So he says, yo, I didn't know you could speak a foreign language. He says, yeah, no, that's my home language. <laughs> Friends, our home language is of the Spirit. Isn't it? Our home language is of the Spirit, friends. Friends, we, we are marked by the Holy Spirit. We need to stay on the boil, friends, because we have this treasure in earthen vessels to show that the power belongs to God and not to us. Surely, friends, 10 minutes in your company without you saying too much, people should start catching, this man's got a different spirit. This woman's got a different spirit. You're a citizen of heaven. Can they see by your lifestyle? Can they see by your values? Can they see that, that, that you love Jesus more than anything else? That goes beyond talk. You know, while I was preparing this, I thought to myself, imagine if I was transferred immediately into one of the factories here. Out of the college, out of this church environment where everyone's nice to me. <laughs> I thought, how long will it take for them to recognize I'm different? It's quite challenging, isn't it? Because hopefully they would. Hopefully they'd pick up, this man is of a different spirit. Friends, there's one more interruption coming. One more interruption coming. Jesus is going to set foot on this earth with incredible power and incredible glory. He's not coming through the back door of a stable. Every eye will see him. And friends, this earth is going to quake. And the Bible says that we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. In a twinkling of an eye. The earth will, to say burnt up is inaccurate because it sounds like destruction. That passage in 2 Peter 3, which talks about the, the, the earth being destroyed by fire, is the word kitsis, which means totally restored. Friends, there's going to come a fire on this earth that is going to purify it from every bit of fallenness. And like we are born again, like we are given our, our glorified bodies, this earth is going to be born again. And it's going to be perfect. Yeah. And we are going to be perfect. As the Bible says very clearly, we are receiving new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. We're not going to go off 
Sorry for those of you who were looking forward to your harps, but we're not going there. Friends, that's why I believe plan A is going to continue. God doesn't have to think I'm another plan. Can you imagine what God has got in store? That's what the Bible says. What no eye has seen, no ear heard, no heart entered into the heart of man. What God has got in store for those who love him. Conquest, friends. Reigning with Christ on a renewed earth. That's biblical. Philippians chapter 3, again, verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body by the power that enables Him even to subject all things to Himself. Friends, you know, sometimes we make out like eternity is Totally vague. But friends, it's not. Jesus, the embodiment of eternity, showed us what eternal life looks like. A perfectly renewed body. After being battered and beaten, well, I'm going to tip over my laces, batten, uh, battered and beaten, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> His disciples see a new body, not a spirit, a new glorious body recognizable except for the, the wounds. Imagine, you remember Thomas? They are like still cowering away after the, the cross. Thomas is the one, unless I see you know, for myself, you know, I'll put my hand in his side, blah, 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 you know, Thomas. Ish, what a scrick he must have got when Jesus walked through the door. <laughs> he says, Thomas, put your hand in my side, Thomas. No condemnation. What does Thomas say? My Lord and my God. Revelation. Glorified body, eternity standing in front of you. What does John say? John the Apostle. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we have uh, seen with our eyes, we have looked upon and touched with our hands. Friends, just think about this. Do you think they hugged Jesus when, when they got over their fright? I think they must have hugged him. They must have danced and had a party. I mean, for Pete's sake, they were having a bride. <laughs> They were having a fish fry on the beach. Yeah. Some jokes. And I can just see John going up. Oh, Jesus. Mm, so lovely to see you. <laughs> Seriously, get, get real. Hey? Eternity is having a bry. Friends, that's not harps on clouds. That is stark reality. Mm, that which we have looked upon and touched with our hands, we declare to you that you may have fellowship with us and that our fellowship is with the Father. That's moving on, friends, into plan B. That's what we're waiting for. Billy Graham's grand grandson tells a story. Billy Graham said to his grandson, one day you'll hear that Billy Graham has died. Don't believe it. On that day, I'll be more alive than I've ever been. I'll be more alive than I've ever been. Are you enjoying your citizenship? <laughs> Are you enjoying being in the kingdom? Are you rejoicing? That you are in the kingdom of God, full of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Or are you just being religious? Are you going through the motions? Or are you in love with Jesus and absolutely enjoying your citizenship? Are you experiencing the benefits of the kingdom? 
And I'm not just talking about health, wealth, and prosperity. I'm talking about enjoying the benefit of the presence of God in your life as a permanent thing. Yes, we have hard times. Yes, we're in the tunnel, as Ben shared. Wonderful word. Yes, we're in the tunnel at times. But we're in the kingdom, and Jesus is with us. And are we expressing our, our nationality? <laughs> are we expressing our citizenship? And are we engaging with people to come into this glorious kingdom? Because that's what it means to be a citizen of heaven. Okay, so I can't believe it. I'm finished in 25 minutes, but <clears throat> I was rushing because I thought I've got so much to say, but now I've said it. <laughs> <laughs> but friends, I want to ask that this morning, we will do exactly what I've just said, that we will engage with God this morning as we close. And I really feel that in this moment, God wants to engage with you and I. He's been engaging with us. There have been calls. And you've been, you've been hopefully dialoguing with God and just enjoying His presence. But where are you at right now today? Is there something that's hampering you of being a full-blown citizen? Is there something in the way of you enjoying being a citizen of the kingdom? We're going to have a moment where we're going to invite you to come forward. We don't need to know what your struggle is. But it's a moment where I believe God wants to engage with us and He wants to impact lives. He wants to bring us out of mediocrity, out of lukewarmness, out of compromise into a place of red-hot fire for the King because we are citizens of the Most High King.